It is my great, great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Rochelle Frank. Uh, you know, as, as much and as long as Alan has known Rochelle and loves her, uh, multiply that a hundredfold uh, from me. So um, there are so many great things I could say about Dr. Frank, um, but she wants some of her hour speaking time, so I'll be brief. She is a balance trained leader and has led balance groups for physicians and medical students for nearly a decade now. In 2013, she created Connect the Docs for the Permanente Medical Group in uh, Kaiser Permanente's North Valley, which remains an active program throughout Northern California and actually in, in many parts of the country. She co-chairs the California North State University College of Medicine Wellness Committee Vice Chairs the Neuro Health and Integrative Neurology Section for the American Academy of Neurology, is an active member of the SSVMS Joy of Medicine Advisory Committee, and was previously a member of the American Academy of Neurology Live Well ELA Committee and Kaiser North Valley Physician Wellness, Wellness Committee. And if all that wasn't enough, She's also an associate professor and clerkship director in neurology at California North State University College of Medicine. Please give it up for Dr. Rochelle Frank. Thank you, John. Um, right back at you. I'm so grateful. Loved your book. So I want to say that too. And thank you for everything. Uh, it's great to see you all. I see um, quite a few people in the audience that have been in balance groups um, not only for SSVMS, but for um, some of the students who've been in balance groups here, as well as um, people who've been in Connect the Docs. So it's great to see you guys in the audience as well. And what I'm going to be doing today is talking about uh, balance groups, giving you a taste of balance. I can't give you a balance group in this kind of setting. But what I did do is I worked with the most recent president of the American Balance Society, Kathy Knowlton. And uh, I really kudos to her because we came up with something that would give you some experience with Ballant. Um, so I'm hoping this will be a chance for you to get a feeling for what Ballant is, okay? So we're gonna be talking a little about the history of Ballant, gonna introduce um, a little bit about the process and then we'll do a taste of Ballant. And by the way, it'll be good for you to have something to write with in front of you um, in a few minutes. So just know that as well. Uh, we're just gonna take notes, nothing major, but just be able to take some notes. And then we'll talk a little more about balance groups themselves. And uh, I do feel I have a hard act to follow after Alan who did such an amazing job. And it's just a, a real um, honor to work with Alan as well. Uh, so, Ballant groups were started by Michael Ballant in the 1950s, and he started them in England after there, it was clear that uh, practitioners, G GPs, they were having a lot of issues dealing with all that had happened in World War II to their patients and wanted a way to look at the psychosocial issues. So he started this with his wife, and uh, it was brought to this country in the 1990s by a family medicine residency director. So it is in quite a few, if not a lot of the, most of the programs, many of the programs in this country of family medicine. If any of you were in a balanced group in your family medicine residency, I will say one thing. I've learned over the years that balanced groups are not always what they look like, uh, what I know as balanced. Um, so if you have that, uh, do hang in there and be open because um, I've had people say, wow, if that was what balance was, I would have liked it in my residency. So if, if anybody is in that position, I just want you to know you'll, you'll get a taste of, of what balance uh, was, uh, what I was taught in the, by the balance society. And uh, uh, Michael Ballant called, um, said at the center of medicine, there's always a human relationship between a patient and a doctor. And that's what is the basis of balance. So what they are, balance groups are case discussions regarding the doctor-patient relationship. We explore issues and we look from the perspective of the doctor. We look from the perspective of the patient, could be the family, might even be another healthcare practitioner, but we're really looking at what's going on. It's not intended to answer questions. And I wanna make that really clear because we have been trained many years, many of us, 
to problem solve, to give answers, to give advice. And this is not that. So we deal with challenging issues, but we're not looking for you to think about them and solve them, okay? So you get to take that hat off and hopefully it's a vacation from that way. It's really using a different part of the brain. And what I like that Kathy Knowlton said is she called it brain yoga. And I like that, but we really are using a different part of our brain. It is not a psychotherapy group. It is not an encounter group or traditional kind of case consultant or you know morbidity mortality realms topic discussion or personal professional support kind of groups. It's none of that. Um, it's, it's really a unique, different way of looking at things. And um, what it is, um, well, you'll find out what it is now. So we're gonna talk about a taste of balance. What we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna, from my experience with a lot of years of this, I just kind of, pulled up a case presentation. It's not a real person. And it even has some remnants of the very first time I presented something in Bellin. Um, I will have, give you a chance to just think about it on your own. And you, can, you don't need to write me notes, but just think about the case, give you a few minutes to do that for your, on your own. And then we're gonna go into groups. And I've been really privileged to have uh, uh, some people from the SSVMS as well as some people who've been involved in Bellin or Connected Docs who will be part of facilitating those small groups. And I thank you all who are here to do that. Thank you for doing that. And then we'll do a little bit more conversation together and talk about balance. So that's what we're gonna do now, okay? So I'm gonna start with the exercise. I do want you to remember, this is a time to take a break from problem solving and advice. And if your brain goes there, that is exactly what we have been learned, trained to do. So please know, that's something that comes up in groups and we just tell people, you know, it's just something that happens all the time, but please try to move away from that as much as you can. If you notice yourself doing it, uh, do kind of take a break. Okay, we are gonna speculate. We're gonna use our imagination. I remember one time someone said, well, we're speculating and we're so used to wanting to get the truth. And this time we're not, okay? We're looking at what could be going on, okay? All right, here's the case. And I'm gonna read it kind of, I'm not gonna read this. I'm going to present it like I would if this was my patient. So I have a patient, Tim, and I, he's 38 years old and he's been in my care for a few years now. And I've been managing his hypertension. He actually has been pretty compliant. It's been great working with him. We have him on some medicine still, but he's really been able to reduce his medicine and get things under very good control use lifestyle changes. It's been really nice to see him put things together. Um, we, we have great conversations. We share uh, loving hiking. Maybe we go up to Tahoe and visit Dr. Chuck. Uh, we love hiking. And uh, it's been great talking about those things in our visits. About five months ago, he did have a motor vehicle accident and was rear-ended. And since he's been having a lot of neck pain. And it's been really tough to get this under control. Uh, We've been looking at solutions. We've ruled out other causes. So we're really working on just how to get his pain in a good place. And I've tried typical treatments, tried things a little beyond that, and it's just not working. He's getting worse. He's continued to have uh, more symptoms and he works in an IT department in a local hospital. He's having trouble focusing on his job and trouble sleeping at night. He's starting to miss days of work and now he's been told that if he misses more, he's actually gonna need a doctor's note. He also said that it's interfering with his daily activities and, and really start putting a strain on his marriage. And he remembers getting Vicodin in the emergency department when he first got this accident, it was bad enough he was there. And he's asking me, can I give him Vicodin? And we've talked about it and I've really you know, avoided those meds. And uh, he, he, he's asked a couple times and uh, we've been able to work around that, but he's getting increasingly interested in that. This time his wife's come to, with him to the appointment and she basically is angry and he is too. And they, you know, he's not angry at me, but they're just frustrated and she's getting angry. Like, why aren't you giving him the Vicodin? We knew that worked. And they want something, they want a solution. Uh, they're wondering, you know, she's suspicious. Why am I withholding all these things from him? 
And I'm trying to alleviate this. I'm trying to keep working with them. I'm trying to listen to the problems they're having. So I'm hoping that gives you guys enough to work with. And I'm hoping that sounds like something you might have heard of maybe in your practice. But just in case you need a bonus, bonus fact. When they were talking to my MA today, she asked them if they had the COVID vaccine. And they said, no way, that's dangerous. And they started talking about how the government was out to get us and some other things, okay? So I'm gonna let you react. We're not gonna talk about it yet, but are you guys having any kind of association? Maybe something you've seen. And if you aren't, I, I, that's fine too. <laughs> Um, so we're going to actually do the questions I have here are the questions we really have in balance. So although we're not doing a balance group, because that's something that requires balance trained leaders, it requires much more to really have a true balance group. We're going to do the questions we actually do in the group. Okay, so I want you to get the feel for that. We're looking at what is a physician? What might they be experiencing? What might I be experiencing? And we do it in third person. What thoughts or emotions might the physician be having? What might the patient be thinking or feeling? What thoughts or emotions might they be having? And in this case, the wife as well. And you can even look at the interaction between the two of them because we heard there was some strain. And what do you see in the interactions going on between the doctor and the patient? And again, anybody else involved? Okay. And I tell you, in this case, even if, if the main point of the case was the nurse practitioner, I mean, the, um, the MA talking to the patient, that would be fair game as well. So this is a kind of thing just to give you an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these questions up. We're gonna give you five minutes. So just a few minutes to be thinking about it and pondering for just like, you know, until about 920. So, so it gives you a chance. And in that time, we're gonna be getting you ready to go into groups. And we'll go into, I'll tell, say something about the groups before we go into the groups at 920, okay? And if you do have questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, but I really want to give you the time to, to think a little bit about the case. And we're going to be going, as I said, just for 10 minutes to tackle the questions. I want to give you just a little bit on guidelines. You know, we do have ground rules and balance, and some of these are applicable here too. Um, we do ask, you know, for this whole conference, we are, um, you know, it's fine to be off video, but for this one section, when you go to the rooms, it's really nice if you can be on video. It's fine, whatever your room looks like or whatever. Um, confidentiality, of course, we all know this with patients, but confidentiality extends to our conversations, even what we do in these small groups, okay? So what's said in balance stays in balance. You don't want to say anything anyone else said, even in the groups we're going to do now, okay? Um, listening and being respectful. Um, again, we're not judging anything and um, allow pauses and silence. Sometimes there's silences and I know that's uncomfortable for everyone, but that's a skill in itself that I've learned over the years is I'm still learning is how to be with silences. Okay. So with that, remember to take a break from problem solving, try to use a different part of your brain. And this is an inquiry, just Look at what could be going on, and we'll take 10 minutes to do that now. Okay, so let's send you to your rooms. Welcome back, everyone. So first, I want to thank all our leaders who um, came through, and Eileen Wetzel and Brandon Craig and um, Dr. Chuck, Dr. Gunther Meyer, Dr. Abramson, Dr. Williams, Dr. Mahesh Balasabramian, but I want to thank you all. So we have a poll question. Were you able to get out of the mode of problem solving and looking at this in a different way? Most of you were able to get out of the mode, so that's great. So um, I'd love to hear from anyone who wants to say anything about doing that, you know, looking at such a challenging situation from a different point of view. I liked being able to think about my own feelings like acknowledging my feelings that, about the situation. Great, thank you. I love how she was on a walk, increasing her wellness even further right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's always powerful for me to um, think about the perspective of the patient, you know? So in the situation that you set up, uh, I get a lot of emotional response to that, especially ending with the vaccine hesitancy. But <laughs> when I think about what it must be like for the patient, and his wife. 
um, it's powerful for me. Thanks, Stacy. Rochelle, one of the things I enjoyed most about that was as I listened to the other members of our group, um, they were saying most of the things that were in my head. And as we were just quiet, um, the solutions were emerging and we just didn't have to really say anything because everybody else was coming up with the solutions. And that was that was a nice shift in perspective. I like that. Wow. I, Drew, I love what you, the way you said that, because that is something I see in the ballot process that, you know, the group kind of comes up with it together and it just keeps opening up. And especially as groups are together for a little bit. So it really uh, that was really great. In, in fact, I'll share something that I, I wasn't planning on, which is in a challenging case, sometimes a group takes on the dynamic of the case. So if it's something that, you know, someone is hard to see, then the person becomes hard to see. Or if there's frustration, people get frustrated, things like that, you know, that um, really it can, it, you kind of pointed to. So I, I wanted to say that's what happens as groups evolve. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the second poll question. I, I'm curious, I, I did ask is this, uh, not only does it remind you anything in your practice, but frequent, you know, you know, how often, you know, often, occasionally, not really getting a lot of often and occasionally and a couple people without. So um, that's, you know, it's really good to, uh, you know, look at what uh, works for you and those who haven't, there might be something similar, but I would say everyone has balanced cases, even if you're not uh, practicing, you know, I think this, this kind of, uh, this kind of mode can work in other situations um, besides even medicine. Um, but just wanted to bring that up. And let me just show you a little bit about other kinds of cases. Uh, you know, what are good cases? So you can imagine it's anything where there's challenges in a relationship. We're ta talking about system, but if you've had someone on your schedule, you have a reaction to it. You get their email and you have a reaction. If you take them home at night, it's something you think about at night, something that even has trouble sleeping. If you have trouble with the family, not just the patient, or if it's someone you actually really have a good relationship with, you're very sad to see what's happening with them, or you have trouble drawing boundaries because they're pushing a boundary that you really wanna help them but you don't know how. These are all really good balance cases along with other things. So with that, I wanna tell you, we're really privileged to have a couple of people. We've had an, a, a, um, the balance, is, um, the SSVMS has been incredibly generous. And we've had a balance group that started with five sessions almost a year ago, and we did another six months. And uh, we now have, um, are starting last, uh, this week we started our, our, our third um, iteration and almost all the members have stayed with the group. So it's been really amazing. So I have two people here that are gonna say more about what their experiences were. So I think Alicia, you were gonna go first, is that right? Yes, Alicia Toussaint, hi. I had the enormous pleasure of participating in a virtual balance group just after the pandemic started at a time when compassion fatigue was catastrophic as we all struggled to adapt to a new world. One side benefit of these Zoom times was the ability to join an awesome balance group from a distance with doctors from multiple specialties and healthcare settings. This expands me out of the isolated clinical silo mindset and provides an overview of the entire healthcare family. I justify this hour a month to my husband as a doctor support group, which of course we know it isn't, but this group is so much more than getting together to air problematic patient interactions. Properly directed under this expert guidance, this group has been an essential tool in my practice life, a way to emotionally unpack those cases that keep sitting with all of us in a safe space with doctors in that same boat. With balance, I can finally share without holding back those deepest fears and frustrations inherent in practicing medicine, as well as the miraculous observations of times that faith was restored in humanity. There's really some great stories there. I've learned fresh perspectives on seeing my patients, their families, and other healthcare professionals with a deep dive, compassionate lens from a place of shared human experience. The group has made my calling in medicine even more worthwhile and special. Uh, group sharing has improved my resiliency to handle patient interactions previously perceived as threatening, reframing them as thoughtful opportunities to grow my humanity and capacity to serve others in need. It's also heightened my awareness of modeling appropriate emotional intelligence responses when teaching students and residents. I'm able to highlight for them certain important techniques and reassuring patients. We took a summer break for 2021, and I found that I really craved that essential hour once a month. By having the rhythm of this monthly group time where I can 
practice exploring those difficult emotions that would otherwise gnaw at my psyche, I'm able to appropriately emotionally regroup at the time of a difficult patient interaction. I continue to gain the bandwidth and control to rechannel that emotional experience to best serve my patients in their time of greatest need. It's just really been a great experience. And I'm very thankful to Rochelle. Thank you, Alicia. I really appreciate all you said. And Mahesh? Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks to Rochelle for the opportunity to um, curate and share some of my insights from the Ballant Group last year. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mahesh Bala Subramanian. I've been a hospitalist most of my life, uh, the last uh, decade at Kaiser Roseville. So I know the past year has been particularly challenging for everyone. And I really, truly consider myself fortunate to have had the Ballant Group for support. Deeply grateful to SSPMS, um, Sam and uh, Rochelle for having created this um, safe, um, supportive and collegial space for us. I, even over Zoom, I felt that there was a true um, and a wonderful sharing of minds. I, I think some of, you know, one of the speakers alluded to that here. Um, uh, I did, I, I would say that a lot, lot of magic happened during our sessions. Uh, in the hospital the past year, I did um, feel a continual sort of like a sense of suffocating um, desperation and powerlessness. Um, however, I really actually wasn't alone because I learned from our colleagues that the pain had encroached into the walls of our clinics as well. Um, they were um, losing patients who uh, they had cared for for almost a lifetime and who'd become almost family to them to COVID. Um, so we... Um, continue to grapple with our suffering together during the sessions and sustain uh, each other in our vulnerabilities, even if only across screens. The, the most important thing that I learned is learn, you know, to be um, comfortable with silence. So our sessions uh, nurtured a very um, beautiful, beautiful, beautifully reflective and contemplative practice, which meant that I really could learn to be in silence where previously I uh, had been quite uncomfortable with that. And um, which, which also meant that if I stopped speaking, there were somebody else who would pretty much say almost the same thought, except in a more a nuanced perspective. And I, I think that I gained a lot from it, um, from hearing uh, the other nuanced perspectives. Um, the insights kept coming almost like, um, you know, I would sort of like, um, um, like Matryoshka, you know, the Russian nesting dolls, you kind of like take them layer upon layer of insights that would come in these sessions. Uh, some of the recurring themes, sort of like the difficult patient, perhaps we had the case here, uh, where there is a dissonance in uh, between what the patient's expectations are and what we can offer as physicians from the medical realm. Um, in this instance, I always uh, would recall um, what Leslie Jameson in her book um, spoke about uh, Morgellons disease, where patients actually uh, think that there's worms crawling under their skin and they start to itch. Uh, she says itching that uh, starts in the mind feels just like itching in the skin, no less real, no more fabricated. So these sessions actually help broaden my perspective really hear and see the patient uh, and appreciate their experiences. Just because today I didn't have a diagnosis or a prescription to offer them, it didn't, it, it totally would be a remiss of me to uh, rush to judgment and invalidate their experience. So the other thing is, I think about this a lot, in the context of racially and culturally conscious care, I think balance sessions help extricate us from our uh, implicit biases and prejudices that uh, we tend to bring to the patient's bedside. And when we have like a painful emotional experience when a patient that who's dear to us doesn't have a desired outcome or they pass away, uh, this, this, I mean, this experience can be emotionally painful. And, um, you know, I actually had one of these just this past year and I think I'm still trying to process this. Um, However, it's, it's important to sort of like reframe um, our role as not just fixers, but as healers. And it is important for us to be present with the patient. And I, uh, being in these sessions allowed me to do that. Um, you know, and the patients really, patients and families really do appreciate it. However, um, uh, you know, you don't leave with a sense of frustration that, well, you weren't actually able to um, do what 
you, you set out to do. Uh, being there with them is as important as healing. Uh, I'm sorry, as sort of fixing. So, yeah, I think uh, um, on the internet, I'd read that, oh, one of the practitioners describing this as uh, sessions as allowing for emo to, to emotionally metabolize uh, our experiences. And I would totally agree with that. And this is this has been a very uh, safe place where I can share my vulnerabilities. Uh, and I always leave with the sense of uh, renewal. Um, I am so grateful for these sessions and look forward to many more um, in the future. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you, Mahesh. Really appreciate it. I really appreciate Alicia Mahesh you coming forward and sharing your experiences with us. And I'm just gonna say that um, I don't really even need to show this slide because you know uh, we've talked about all this really helps people. I've had people even say that something that had been bothering them for months really just they stopped thinking about as much because they had more freedom with the situation. It's not that they solved it. They just had more ability to face it and felt like they were not alone connecting with colleagues and improving, again, communication skills and awareness and things like that. So there's all these levels that I found balance help people. And just to say, we um, started the group I mentioned. There's another group that is starting next month and we'd love to have any of you participate. We will put a little bit, you can sign up um, on the uh, um, Medical Society's website, the SSVMS website. Um, and I think that will be put in the chat, some of the links. Um, and uh, Dr. Gunther Meyer, uh, Michael Gunther Meyer and I are leading the group together. So we'd love to have you join us. Um, there's other similar groups in the community. I know some of you, there's a few of you in the audience that are Connect the Doc leaders, but we've had Connect the Docs as uh, uh, Dr. Chuck talked about. And, and there's um, also, there's students on this call who have been in a balance group I've led at the medical school. So I'm gonna open it up now for questions. I also, if anybody you know, wants to say anything else, let's, let's start with questions, but I know there's quite a few that probably can share your experiences as well, but let's, let's uh, see what questions people have. You're welcome to say them or just ask them in the chat. Um, and I really thank you all for being here and being engaged. I popped into most rooms and you guys were having great conversations. I was really amazed what you guys were talking about in such a short time. So thank you. Big round of applause for Rochelle. Thank you so much, Rochelle. That was fabulous. Well, thank you. Thank you all for participating. Again, thanks thanks to all the leaders. And I really hope I've caught everybody because you guys came out through and I really appreciate that. Um, hi, I'm Andrea. I just wanted to say like, I recall like being in Valiant Group when I was a resident and um, in at Dignity Health at Methodist. And I think it was very helpful, but as now working in, um, out in, um, in a clinic, like how do you join a balance group? Um, do we have them available to us in, um, through the Valley Medical Society? Yeah, we have one starting and there's a, a link in the chat that they put in. Um, it's going to be the second Thursday, um, of in starting in October on October 14th, it'll be one hour a month virtually. So uh, the American Balance Society a few years ago started doing virtual balance groups and we realized that's a format that works better in our current world. So, um, you know, do, do check that out. It's, it's it, again, we're starting with four sessions. We do ask people come to all the sessions um, if you have to miss one, because we understand how physicians are, that's fine. But we do want people coming in knowing it's an ongoing group. After the four sessions, like I said last year, we ended up continuing the group. And there's been a little bit of add and subtract in the, in the group that's existing. But this new group, we're really hoping um, we'll have the four sessions and people might want to continue with that group as well. So, um, so please do join us. It's a 6.30 uh, to 7.30 and it'll be uh, once a month. And there's no fee. This is um, the, uh, what's really great is that uh, the SSVMS is sponsoring us and you know uh, supporting this. So we are very, very fortunate that they're doing that. And I want to give big kudos to, um, to the, the society. Um, I want to say that I think this is unique that the society is supporting us. All right. Well, we are at time. And once again, Rochelle, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and Thanks to some of your participants who've shared their personal experience. Uh, uh, Balance is definitely for many people a bridge to joy and meaning.